Okay, good morning everybody. As we go to the chitas of today, we're holding, today is Friday, Shushan Purim. We are holding on, in the book of uh, Leviticus, portion of Stav. We're holding on chapter eight, verse number 22. So we are in the middle of, this, of the, uh, the trader is talking about the dedication of the Beis Hamidosh and the uh, in, in investing in the vestures of, of Aaron and his sons and what they brought, the, sacri the sacrificial offerings that they brought on their dedication to the Beis Hamidosh. He then brought the second ram, El Hamiluyim. This is the ram of his vestures. And Aaron and his sons leaned their hands forcefully on the ram's horn. This expression is equivalent to El Hashlamim, the completion ram. Miluyim does not mean inauguration, but rather denotes Shlamim, a ram that completes Mashlimim. It completes the status of the Kayin and their Kohana. So this is called El Hamiluyim, was only brought on, the, on inaugurating the Aaron and the sons. It's called Miluyim because it finished them. It completed them. It invested them. So Miluyim is to fill, is the Hebrew word to fill. And he slaughtered this ram and he took from his blood. He then put it, placed some blood on the cartilage of Aaron's right ear, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the toes of, me, of the right feet. And then Moshe Rabbeinu poured the blood. I dashed the blood on the blood on the altar around the altar. Verse 25, he took the fat and he took the the, the, the uh, and the tail. But and all the fat on the innards. And the diaphragm of the liver. And the two kidneys. And the fats of the kidneys. And the right thigh. Verse 26 of Mithala Matis, Allah in the basket of unleavened bread that was before the Lord. Laka Khala Matzah took because always all the chalas were ten chalas. He took one loaf of unleavened bread. The chalas lechem and one loaf of oily bread, shem and achas. Virakik echad in one way. And he put it together with the chalavim and the shaykayam. So he took part of the menchois and he put it together with the uh, together with the with the with the uh, the meat and the fats. I think I showed you a picture of that already. So another picture, maybe I have it. Here's the picture that we have. That's what it means. He put them all together. And he put it up together. Verse 27, he then he placed it all on Aaron's mom and his sons. By Yon of Asaf Tnufan, he waved them a wavingly for Lufna Hashem. So that's what it means that he put his hand underneath their hands. Again, because he was the acting Koyen at that time, he was teaching them how they would do it in the future with Jews when they would do, when a regular Jew would uplift his sacrifice. That he would put on the, the kaya would put his hand underneath the, the Jewish person's hand. Verse 28. 
And then Moshe took it from their hands, Vayakta Mizbecha, and he brought it as a, he brought it, uh, he burned it on the altar. Ala which is the, uh, the, the, the oil, the, the, the altar of the sacrifice, Miluyim Haim, these are the invested offering, Lareach Nechayach, which was a pleasing fragrance, Ishei Hu Lashem, it's a burnt offering to God. Rashi says, Moshe performed the service throughout the seven days of, in white robes. So Moshe Rabbeinu, even though he was the Kayan of the day, it was actually, actually, actually the act of the Kayan Gadol, but he didn't wear the Kayan Gadol's garments. He wore a regular Kayan's garment. And he did it for seven days, the first seven days. Alayla, after he burnt the burnt offering, with the exception of this one, we do not find anywhere in scripture the case of a thigh of a peace offering offered up on the altar. So this was the only offering that the thigh was brought up on the Mizbeach. Verse 29, and then Mesh took the breast and he waved it as a waving before God. Meila miluim from the uh, from the from the uh, from the ale for the ram of investors. La mana, which was going to be for a uh, a, a portion to Moshe Rabbeinu, because Moshe Rabbeinu was again acting as the kohen of the day. He got his portion, like the kohen got the chaza. The kohen got the did that 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 part, the breast. Also the kohen also got the 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 the, the shake. But over here, the sheikh went on the Mizbeach in this situation, but he got the breast of the uh, this, uh, this sacrifice. God commanded Moshe. We know when Kailach later asked, the, asked the, for the Kuna, Moshe Rabbeinu said, I want to be a Kain too. And, uh, but the Abish gave it to Aaron. And the interesting thing, it was seven days that he be, was a Kain. And he showed his brother seven days how to do the service. Because that is brought on the Gemara that that was to the seven days that Moshe Rabbeinu was begged by God to go down to go down to uh, to Egypt, and then Moshe, God says, "Okay, I'm going to choose Aaron, and Aaron will come down and greet you. He'll be he'll be he will be he'll be the speaker." And that's why after these seven days, Aaron became the Kayan Gadol. We are holding, okay, we finished the Chumash of the day. We now go to the Tanya of the day. We are holding in the middle of chapter 37 of Tanya. And the Alter Rebbe is talking about the power of doing a mitzvah and the power that the way it affects the soul of a person, his godly soul, his animalistic soul, the whole world at large that is affected through doing a mitzvah. Because ultimately, the whole purpose of the world is the elevation and revelation of godness in the world. And the only way we can have the revelation of godness in the world is through doing a mitzvah, is through doing the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Because that reveals God in a total, unconstricted, unhidden, a revelation that is revealed without any hiddenness is in any mitzvah that we do Every single day of Allah's. The Alter Rebbe explains it. Alpi Kabbali explains it even further. When the whole neshama of the divine soul, because the neshama, the neshama of the, there's one neshama for all the all yidden. There's one source. Av echol kolama. We have one father. We have one soul. So the entire Jewish nation has one neshama. And this one soul is divided into 600,000 particular offshoots. The standard figure for the members of the Jewish nation, all individual souls be, being further subdivisions of this six. 100,000 general souls, as explained further. So 600,000 souls. It says the same expression as 
600,000 letters in the Torah, corresponding to the 600,000 souls. Even though we know there's 300,000 letters in the Torah, but there's letters in between letters. There's the dark letters and light, white letters, the Gemara says. It's on 600,000 uh, letters in the Torah, 600,000 souls, there was 600,000 men counted the 20 and above who, who went out of Mitzrayim. These are the collective 600,000 souls. And that's also in, in brought in the word Yisrael. Yashishim Adiba Yisrael is also is, 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 is in, in, in those words, the word Yisrael, Yud Shin Reishlamin, also brings out about this concept of the 600,000. So in general, the 600,000 soul, all that comes out of one soul. So this collective soul, this guy called Nefesh brought this call to Yagmitzatzeritator, and that each and one will fulfill each individual soul, therefore, 630 Mitzvah. When they were refrained from transgressing 365 prohibitions, to refrain, restrain. The 365 blood vessels of the animal soul in the body. So that they're not drawn and nurture or receive vitality by the means of such a transgression from any of the three completely unclean clipots, from which is derived the 365 big biblical prohibitions. The Iraisa, which is Torah prohibition, and fame that are born, even the rabbinical prohibitions. So, since all that derives from the vitality of the three holy unclean clippers cannot rise to holiness, were a Jew to transgress any prohibition and thereby causing a particular blood vessel associated with that prohibition to receive vitality from this clipper. So what happens when I when a, when a Jew does a sin, he brings the capability of impurity, he brings within him impurity into his existence. And now he's gone off the path. That's why it's called an Aveda. To go off, he's brought in a concept of impurity into his existence. And now he's impure. So you can imagine we're learning in the Torah about impure person cannot come to the temple. If you're impure, you cannot come to the base of Mikdash. If I'm impure, I cannot go into the levels of holiness. Why? Because I am impure. I brought about a concept of impurity in my existence. So shuv lo nefesh is Therefore, he can no longer, his vital soul, his animalistic soul, surely, cannot be connected and go to godliness. If he became impure with the three impure clips, if he, God forbid, we've done a negative Aveda. My friend, these clippers can never be elevated. Unless it's nullified and utterly destroyed. As it's brought in the, in the Pasuk, that ultimately the Abishtim, even if we do tshuva for our various that we did, not, not always, does it, though we have the capacity and the capability to. To, to get rid of impurity in the world. And therefore, the has to, we have to wait. The you know, Mashiach comes and says, the Abishta says, I will take away impurity from the world. I will take away all the impurity that you brought to the world. So similarly, anything which derives the vitality from them can never descend to holiness. Therefore, only observance of all 365 
prohibition allows the entire vital soul to descend without any part of it held back by the impurity of this cliff. That's why we need to do tshuva. We need to do tshuva to break the clipper, to break the chains, the chain that doesn't let us elevate ourselves. And all the good that I'm going to do cannot help me because since I have an Aveda that I didn't do tshuva, that Aveda is keeping me down. And then when we fulfill every now, if I start with says go away for negative and do good. If I go away for negative, so I don't shame, I don't put myself in prison. Now that I'm not in prison, I say to him, go do good. You can't tell a person that's in prison, go 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 do good. He's in prison. So what's going to help him telling him, go, 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 go do good. I'm in prison. I can't get out of here. So first, we got to break the clipper. We have to break the evil. Now you're free. I'm free. Go do good. Now you can go out and do 240 positive commandments, and you can draw the light of God into the world. To elevate it and to bind and unite with him the, the entire vital soul, which is 248 limbs of the body, in a perfect unity, in a perfect unity with God, to be one. That was the whole reason why God brought me down to the world. The whole reason why the Abishta made a world and put me in this world. The Abishta made this whole world and put me in this world that I would be able to make a dwelling place for God in this world. So first of all, when I want to invite the Melech Malchi Amlochim to my house, let's say, not let's say, I'm, I'm trying. I want to invite God, God who's going to come to my house. First, I got to get rid of, got to clean the house. I got to get rid of all the schmutz in the house. I got to get rid of everything that doesn't belong, in, that the king, that the Melech, the Abish doesn't want to be in this house, if he's going to come to the house. So first, I got to assume and not clean up the house. And now bring beautiful things in the house. Because that's what the Abishta wanted. He wants to come into my house. He wants to be a dida in my house. He wants to be able to dwell in my house. Like I dwell. Ultimately, my house is my body. The Abishta wants to dwell with Shachanti Besecham. I want to dwell within you, Besechal Echa Viachal. I want to dwell within every Jew. So first clean yourself. I need to clean myself up. And get out of jail. And then I can be yachid with the Abish, I can become one with God. The Haimlay love my cover, can be obvious. I can become a chariot like the patriarchs who are chariots of God, whose every limb was totally submission to divine will, whether they were designated as God's chariot. And so will every Jew. Become a chariot by performing mitzvah. We all have the capability to be like the patriarchs who became a chariot of Akadish Baruch Hu. We each have the capability. So through Meirava, I say to you, breaking, never doing a Veda, never doing a sin, and only doing mitzvahs, we can bring about, did about that, what the patriarchs did, to bring God to the world in a way that the patriarchs did, they were a vehicle for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a vehicle for God to bring him down into this world. We each and every one of us can do it in the same way. Today is Shushan Purim. Happy Shushan Purim. It's the 15th day of the month. Chapter 77 and 78 in Tilim, and you would do the Tilim of the day, chapter 77, Ayin Zayin, Ayin Chet 77 and 78. I want to wish you all a happy Shushan Purim. I want to wish you all a happy Shabbos.
as we go into Shabbos, I want to hope that you will all learn and do chitas on your own over the Shabbos and the mid Shem. We will come together on Sunday morning for a new parsha, parsha Shmini, and we'll uh, learn, continue the chitas of the day as we continue learning together every single day. I wish you all a wonderful Shabbos, a happy Shushan Purim, and may God give us a wonderful menucha, tranquility and happiness in our life. Have a good Shabbos, everybody. See you in Mitch Shema Sunday.